Honor maiden huntress, Artemis, Artemis, new moon come to us. Silver shining wheel of radiance, radiance, mother come to us. Hey there boys and girls, Lady Silver Vixen here. Um, I decided to go ahead and bring back my herbs videos. That way you guys can continue to learn about the different herbs and stuff that are out there. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys, though, before we got started on uh, catnip, which is the herb of the day today, um, some of the different books and the different things that you can actually buy uh, to help you in the process of learning. Um, this here actually is a CD-ROM. It's Herbal Guide. Um, I got this at one of the local department stores for a buck. It's um, a little out of date. It's copyright is 2001. Um, but it does actually offer some really good information. So you can find a lot of different things like that out there. Um, and for those of you who are really more into books and learning from books that actually have pictures and things of that nature in it, um, this one here is a good one if you're into healing remedies by the use of herbs. Um, this one here was $10, so whole $10. Um, really good book. It's uh, an actually an illustrated encyclopedia of healing remedies. Um, this one here doesn't have as many good pictures as what I personally like, but um, this is a really good book if you are really just starting to study. Uh, this is from, if I remember correctly, a more pagan perspective, and that's the master book of uh, herbalism. Uh, this is an okay book. I'm not particularly fond of it, but it does actually give you a ton of information on any kind of herb that you pretty much want to find. Um, this one here is also another good one. This is the Herbal Handbook. This one, if I remember correctly, I think is the one that actually um, relates to some of the Christian um, references. So if it's not this one, it was the other one. But uh, this will help you out too. And then lastly, this one here is what I usually use when I'm coming up with some new information. This here is a great, um, a great encyclopedia to have. Yes, I have encyclopedias. It's scary, I know. Um, <laughs> this is really good for anybody who wants to look at the magical aspects as well as medicinal of different plants. And I will actually be using a little bit of information from that book in a few minutes. Um, quick shout out to Miss Selena Fox and the fantastic things that she does, though, because I finally found my circle. Um, <laughs> my circle magazine that her group puts out and this is just fantastic. I love the information on labyrinths in this. Um, I may just go ahead and actually do a video on some of the information about the labyrinths in here a little later on. Um, you guys should definitely check this out. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and jump right into uh, catnip. First of all, um, there's different things uh, when it comes to catnip that you can do. One of the things that I really like is obviously you can grow it. It's a very easy herb to grow. It's part of the mint family, so it's very hardy in most cases. Um, and it can be grown just about anywhere. This here is actually catnip. I grow this outside my house. Um, <laughs> I harvested a little bit of this just so I could bring it in and show it to you guys. Um, the few plants that I have of this are actually like little miniature bushes now um, for anybody who used to follow my herbal garden. Um, one of the most notable things about catnip is it's fuzzy. <laughs> and the leaves actually feel almost like cat fur on the top. They're usually kind of almost like an arrow shape with little jagged teeth off to the side. Um, Depending on how hardy and how healthy the plant is, it's going to depend on the thickness of the stalk, too. This one here is actually pretty healthy, and it's kind of thick for a stalk. So the smell 
is fantastic. I love the smell of fresh catnip and soothing my, my cats that I have in the house. Um, <laughs> but overall, catnip is actually a pretty simple plant to grow. It's not overly complicated or anything of that nature. So if you guys really want a good starter plant to start growing and working with catnip, I would definitely recommend. Um, catnip's other common names would be field balm, um, nip, catmint. Like I said, it is part of the mint family. Um, <clears throat> it can be used in culinary, um, such as in the forms of teas. You can actually add it to salads, stuff of that nature. And uh, there's actually some cosmetic uses for it, which would be if you create an, an infusion form, which is kind of like a tea. Um, it can actually be used on your hair to help treat dandruff, and you can also use it for a treatment for acne. Um, some of the precautions behind it, though, are definitely try to avoid it during pregnancy. Uh, people with epilepsy probably should stay away from this. Um, if you really want more more information about why, you should talk to your, your doctor. I am not a doctor. Please do not think that. Um, you also want to avoid long-term heavy use of anything. So but in particular with catnip because it can actually affect the absorption of iron in the body. Um, some of the medical uses, if you're using this as a tea, which quite a few people do, um, including myself, it's really good for fevers, digestive issues, bladder dysfunction, discomfort, um, bronchial congestion, congestion, colic, nervousness, menstrual cramps, colds and flus, and it works as a good insect repellent too. Um, I really like using this for menstrual cramps, though, because it actually has a, um, a local anesthetic property to it, almost. Um, and it's kind of like aspirin. It kind of targets the pain and then just dissolves it. It's also a decent anti-inflammatory as well. Um, some of the magical uses behind it is that it's said that you can actually create a psychic bond with cats when you're using this. I can honestly attest to this when it does work. <laughs> you just have to be very respectful of the cat. Um, it also promotes playfulness because it's a mint, so there's always energy involved with it and lots of high energy. Um, I don't like saying this too much because I know pe the first thing people are going to do is start asking questions, but it can actually be used for love spells, and I'm talking about the attraction of love spells, not actually putting a love spell on somebody. Um, and you can do that by the putting these leaves, whether they be dried or fresh, in mojo bags and sachets. But I have to recommend that if you go with the mojo bag and sachet, um, if you use fresh herbs, even though the smell is a lot better, they don't last very long, so you constantly have to replenish the herbs that are in the bag. Um, <clears throat> if you grow in your garden and keep it close to your home, it will actually attract friendly spirits as well as good luck. Um, you can also add this to dream pillows to help promote sleep. And the large leaves have usually traditionally been used for actually marking pages in magical books. Once you've dried them out a little bit, you press them, and then you can use them as markers. Um, it's really fantastic for if you uh, forget your pages, because it'll actually help stimulate your memory as well. But Overall, if you're going to dry catnip, um, you want to tie the stems together and hang them upside down in a warm, dry, shady spot. You don't really want a whole lot of sunlight, and this goes to really any herb. You don't want a whole lot of sun. Um, you want to keep it in a dry place because you're trying to get rid of the moisture, not add moisture to it. When it's completely dry, you can crumble the leaves into a jar with an airtight lid and store them um, away from the sunlight, like I do with all of my herbs. I put them in mason jars and stick them in cabinets with closed doors. This actually helps in keeping them fresh longer. So, um, overall though, I mean, it's a really rewarding experience, guys. It's really fun. Um, one of the things that I think is funny that's kind of contradictory is that some people actually believe that drinking catnip um, during morning sickness, if you have morning sickness when you're pregnant, um, it's actually something that's safe, but there's, there's contradictory evidence of such. Um, personally, I'm more of a person who thinks that, you know, it's, 
if it works it works and so long as you're not causing any negative or ill effects to your body or a child if you're pregnant you should really either way consult a doctor um, let me see if I can hurry up and find this catnip page that way I can actually show you um, one of the pretty nifty things about this book that I showed you um, I love this book <laughs> it's just been a while since I've actually used it um, guys if you ever forget where something in particular is in a book it's called an index so let's see here I love an index. All right, here we go. Page 24, Cat. This is just fantastic. I love this book. It breaks everything down for you. Um, it gives you a picture of the plant, tells you what the scientific name of it is. Um, cat will, catnip will actually invite more love into your life, enhance your good luck, and make you smile more. Um, its main focus is to remind you that life is you can play in life it's not going to it's not going to kill you um, it also breaks it down into what the plant actually is about catnip is a member of the mint family it grows in you know all over southern europe and cooler parts of asia and north america um, it also tells you how to harness catnip's magical properties such as if you sprinkle a little bit of dried catnip around the rooms of your home, your guests will seem happier, and so will you. Um, and some long lost friends might even show up at your door. And then it also goes into uh, medicinal uses. Fantastic book. Get this book if you really are into herbs. Okay? Anyway, if you guys have any more information, um, if it relates to medicinal things, seek, seek information from your doctor, not from me. Um, if you want to know more on the magical side, then seek information from me. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, okay guys? I don't know how many people have come to me asking me for herbal remedies for different things such as epilepsy. Uh, I've had people come to me for, what else was it? There's been a few different things. Uh, asthma was one of them. Um, I cannot cure your illnesses, okay? Herbs can help treat the symptoms and possibly even cure some things but that's not for me to decide what is good for you as an individual you guys need to take proper precautions and actually seek medical help and medical advice if you really have any true uh, questions about going the herbal route okay so this is lady silver vixen and i'm signing out for now